the very first animals on Earth appeared around 600 million years ago. But even with so many researchers studying these early animals, a lot of mysteries remain about these creatures, including whether they were even animals, which I'll explain later. So despite the detailed research that's been done on the trace fossils, shelly fossils, and even soft-bodied fossils from this time, a new study that analyzed fossils preserved in chert, or microcrystalline quartz, may change our perspectives on these ancient creatures. But before we jump into this new study and their findings, let's just define some terms. First, the Ediacaran Cambrian transition. Most people know about the Cambrian period, which went from around 540 to 485 million years ago because of the popularity of the Cambrian explosion, which used to be when we thought the very first animals appeared on Earth. Well, we've since learned that animals likely appeared much sooner, in the period before the Cambrian which we call the Ediacaran. And this period went from around 635 to 540 million years ago. It took us a while to figure this out because unlike Cambrian organisms, Ediacaran ones lack hard parts or shells and skeletons. They are what we call soft-bodied. Picture things like jellyfish. And soft-bodied organisms are much more rarely preserved in the rock record because soft tissues are typically decomposed rather than fossilized. But thankfully, we do have some exceptionally well-preserved imprints of these soft-bodied organisms in rocks like shales from this time. But we still don't fully understand what exactly changed across this Ediacar and Cambrian transition that allowed animals to begin producing hard parts, skeletons and shells. We also don't know why many, if not most, of the Ediacaran biota went extinct during this transition. We don't even know which of the Ediacaran organisms were actually animals or animal ancestors, or if they were completely unrelated to modern animal groups. So this new study aims to provide some clarity about the events that occurred across this boundary. But one more term we should define before jumping into the study is chert. Chert is a rock made of microcrystalline quartz, or silica, silicon dioxide. And the chert analyzed in this study is what we call chert Lagerstaden. Sorry to my Germans out there if I'm saying that wrong. These are chert deposits that contain exceptionally well-preserved fossils, sometimes even including soft tissues, which in the fossil world is extremely rare. But we've studied chert Lagerstaden for years. So what's significant about these new findings from this most recently published study? Well, for this study, the researchers explored eight different chert outcrops across South China that were deposited in environments ranging from shallow tidal flats to deep marine basin slopes. And what's really important about these outcrops is that they span the last few million years of the Ediacaran into the very beginning of the Cambrian period. So they really hit this Ediacaran Cambrian transition spot on, giving us great insight into what changed across this boundary. So what'd they find? Well, the authors of this study identified three major fossil assemblages in these rocks. Assemblage one, the oldest assemblage of fossils in these rocks from around 630 to 565 million years old, contains acanthomorphic acrotarchs, which is fancy terminology for spiky microfossils that aren't present in older rocks, so newly evolved spiky microfossils, and some early eukaryotes. But no metazoans, or multicellular animals, just yet. Assemblage two were rocks from the very end of the Ediacaran from around 550 to around 539 million years ago. And these contain mainly string and strap-like fossils as described by the manuscript, which were long segmented filaments preserved as clay mineral casts. These in terms of classification or taxonomy are not well defined. They may have been early animals, but more research suggests that they were likely either colonial eukaryotes of some sort or just bacterial gnats. But it's possible that they were some sort of non-metazoan multicellular life or organism, which is super cool because that means it was multicellular life, but it wasn't necessarily animals. So maybe something that was more of an evolutionary experiment type group that has no living relative that we can compare to, which is kind of crazy to think about. 
But the takeaway from Assemblage 2 is that these fossils still looked like your classic, soft-bodied, worm-world Ediacaran fossils and remain pretty mysterious. But this brings us to Assemblage 3. The fossils in Assemblage 3 are around 539 to 521 million years old, so very early Cambrian period. And this is where things get exciting. These charts suddenly contain a diverse array of carbonaceous microfossils. This included small shelly fossils, sponge spicules, and potentially most importantly, filmy carbonaceous fossils. In other words, soft tissues that may have been animal cuticles. There were forms like complex net-like and wrinkle-like sheets, thread ball-like forms, and even sac-shaped fossils that may have been early animal tissues or even coprolites, which is just fossilized poop. A lot of these structures are not super well-defined in terms of what species they were or belonged to. However, what we do see clearly from these three assemblages of fossils from these chert deposits is an abrupt shift from assemblage two to assemblage three. And the authors of this study argue that this reflects a true biological revolution rather than just a change in fossil preservation from the Ediacara to Cambrian period. Why? Because this shift happens in continuous outcrops. It's not like the rock type changed there's no missing layer or unconformity. The biology seems to be the major changing factor. This means that the rise in multicellular animals may have been more abrupt and dramatic than we thought. And CHIRT can help us get a clearer picture of this transition. In addition, they noticed a lot of diversity in this third assemblage of fossils from the early Cambrian. Some bearing resemblance to modern animal groups and others are completely unique. And this diversity, as well as their absence from older rocks, supports the idea of a rapid evolutionary expansion at the base of the Cambrian. So what does all this mean for future studies? Well, the takeaway from this paper is that Chert Lagerstatten offer a whole new window into understanding the Cambrian explosion, especially for tiny carbon-rich fossils that don't preserve very well in other rock types. By expanding our toolkit beyond trace fossils shells and shales, we start to see that the earliest Cambrian animals didn't just show up with skeletons. They may have had complex soft tissues, cuticles, or digestive tracts long before they ever left burrows or built reefs. So this study provides us new insight into this relatively enigmatic time in Earth's history. However, I do want to note that this is one set of rocks and one study. Other studies have looked at rocks from this time elsewhere on the globe, that tell slightly different stories. And it's going to take a lot more detailed analyses to piece together exactly what happened across the Ediacaran Cambrian transition. But if you'd like to hear more about what may have driven the evolution of the Ediacaran biota, potentially the earliest animals, you can watch this video next about Snowball Earth and the Earliest Animals.